In this problem, we're told an electron whose mass is equal to 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms leaves one end of a TV picture tube within a, with zero initial speed and travels in a straight line to the accelerating grid, which is 1.8 centimeters away. It reaches the grid with a speed of 3 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. If the accelerating force is constant, compute A, the acceleration, B, the time to reach the grid, and C, the net force in newtons, and then we're told to ignore the gravitational force of, on the electron. So let's draw what's going on here. So we have this electron. So it's going to be leaving this TV picture tube with zero initial speed. So we know at this point it's going to be traveling zero meters per second. And then it's going to travel in a straight line to the accelerating grid, which is 1.8 centimeters away. It's going to travel this distance, which is 1.8 centimeters. And it's going to end up here. And then we know it's going to reach it with this speed. So the speed here is going to be 3 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. So that's what's going on. Let's go ahead and write down our given. So given. So what are we told? So we know that the mass of it, right? They tell us the mass of our electron. It's going to be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, right? Because kilograms is mass, so we know the mass. We know v sub 0, which is the initial velocity is going to be 0 meters per second, right? Because we know at this time it's going to be traveling this speed because it starts from rest, right? So that's going to be that. And then what we want to do is write down the velocity, so v, the final velocity. So at the end, we know it's going to be traveling 3 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. So 3 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. So when we have, we have the initial velocity, final velocity, then we also know the change in x, right? So the change in our position, we travel 1.8 meters, right? We start at 0, go to 1.8. So 1.8 centimeters. So that's going to be that. And then keep in mind what we're trying to find first. So we're trying to find the acceleration in A. And then B, we're trying to find the time. So I'm going to write A equals question mark because we're trying to find A for A. And then B, we're trying to find the time. So I'm going to write T equals question mark because we're trying to find time. And then C is going to be the force. So we're right, force equals question mark. So let's go ahead and start with A first, though, so the acceleration. So the way you want to think about this is just like a kinematic equation problem where you're given a bunch of variables and you want to solve for acceleration. So if you look at these three variables we have here, V sub 0, initial velocity, uh, final velocity, and change in your position, uh, we can use the formula V squared equals V sub 0 squared plus 2A times delta X. So we're going to use this to solve. Notice how we have all the variables needed to solve this. So all we have to do is just plug in. So let's plug in V, which is 3 times 10 to the 6th, or 3, yeah, 3 times 10 to the 6th squared, which equals our initial velocity, which is 0. So 0 squared is just 0. I'm just going to get rid of it. Times 2, times A, which is what we're solving for, so we just leave it as A, times delta X. And so keep in mind, uh, delta X has to be written in meters because uh, this is in centimeters here. This is in, uh, these are all in meters, so we need to change it. And so we can just divide it by 100, essentially. So 1.8, if you divide it by 100, it's going to be 0 0.018 meters. But I'm going to rewrite it in scientific notation because this is in scientific notation. So if we move it two directions this way, it's really just going to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. So that's how we're going to choose to write it. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2. And then what we can do is go ahead and solve for A. So if I move this out front, we can just divide both sides by 2 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2. So 2 times, this is supposed to be like this, ignore this parenthesis. So 2 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2. So that's that. And then you can get A just by dividing this. So this is going to be squared, so this is going to become 12. Then notice how you're minusing 2, so you just add those. So it's going to be 14, then 3 divided by this right here, 2 times 1.8. Uh, it's just going to end up to be 2.5 times 10 to the 14. And then keep in mind what we measure acceleration is meters per second squared. So 2.5 times 10 to the 14th meters per second squared. This right here is going to be your answer to A. So... Let me write it right here, 2.5 times 10 to the 14th meters per second squared. So that's that. That's going to be answer to A. Let's move on to B. 
So B is the time to reach the grid. So if we solve for B, or we're trying to find B, right? And we're trying to find time. So we can use uh, any kinematic equation. I'm going to choose to use this one. V equals V sub 0 plus A times T. Because notice how we just have A now. We have V sub 0. And we have V, so we can just solve for T. So if we just plug in everything, we know V is 3. Or no, we know V is going to be... Yeah, so V is 3 times 10 to the 6th equals V sub 0, which we know is going to be 0, plus... So 0 plus something is just that, right? So A, 2.5 times 10 to the 14th, and then times T, which is what we're solving for. So if we want to solve for T, 2.5 times 10 to the 14th, divide both sides by it. So T equals 3 times 10 to the 6th, divided by 2.5 times 10 to the 14. If you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 1.2 times 10 to the minus 8. And keep in mind what units are. We're using seconds here. So it's going to be seconds. It's 1.2 times 10 to the minus 8. It's going to be your answer to B. So let me write it right here. 1.2 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. So now we've got B. Let's solve for C. So C is going to be the net force. And so keep in mind when you solve for force, force equals mass times acceleration. So if we have the mass, right, we are given the mass, and we just got to multiply by the acceleration we found, and we can find the net force. So force equals the mass, which is 9.11, right, right here, times 10 to the minus 31. And then we're multiplying it. I'm going to move it down. Just imagine that's there. Times our acceleration. 2.5 times 10 to the 14. So we have 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Or, yeah, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 2.5 times 10 to the 14th. If you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 2.28 times 10 to the minus 16. That's just a simplified version. Hopefully you know how to multiply uh, numbers with scientific notation. So keep in mind when you measure this, or if you're using mass for kilograms and acceleration is in meters per second, uh, your force is measured in newtons. So 2.28 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. So yeah, that's going to be how you solve this problem. And hopefully you found this useful.